Using physical properties such as Lorentz invariant, we managed to write a Lagrangian for a scalar field. We also saw that if we take only the quadratic terms and if we take the classical limit, we get the Klein-Gordon equation, which in uh, relativistic quantum mechanics describe a free particle. Therefore, we associated the non-quadratic terms to uh, interaction. So we will first turn this term to zero in order to get a Lagrangian describing free scalar field without interactions. The resulting Lagrangian is called the Klein-Gordon Lagrangian because it gives the Klein-Gordon equation uh, when we plug it in into the Euler Lagrange equations. So let's plug in this Lagrangian into our expression for the path integral. It turns out that for a Lagrangian which is only quadratic in the field, we get a path integral which can be solved exactly. This is one of the few cases, if not the only case, where we can get an exact solution. So for that we will first rewrite the kinetic energy term uh, using an integration by part. We use the integration by part to make this derivative act on the other term. And as before, we consider our field to be zero at the space-time boundaries. So that's the only term which is left from our integration by part. So what I will do now is to massage a little bit this term. So far, each field is expressed in x, and I, what I want is one expressed in y and one expressed in x. So I will introduce another uh, space-time integral and a delta function. So we did that so this term can be expressed as an operator function of y minus x. This is now expressed as a Gaussian integral. Let me start uh, with a Gaussian integral for a single variable. It's a good homework exercise to, to generalize this Gaussian integral for n variables. where x and j are vectors and a and, uh, is a matrix and a minus 1 is its inverse. Perhaps I should add some transpose to be more explicit. The left hand side of this Gaussian integral looks very close to uh, what we have for path integral with fields. In fact this is just a discretized version where we have only n point uh, of space-time. The analogy goes as follows. Applying this analogy to the right hand side, we can write the solution uh, for the path integral, where d is the inverse of uh, the operator a. c is just a constant which does not depend on the source, and as I'm in essentially interested in how the field reacts uh, to the action of the source, um, this is not a very important object in itself. And in fact, this is uh, the amplitude z when j is equal to zero. We can't claim that we have solved the path integral yet because we still have a bunch of integrals in an exponential to treat, to take into account. However, this is a much simpler uh, version than what we had before because with the path integral, we had an infinite number of integrals to take into account. Now we only have eight of them. In fact, only the phase really matters, so it's common to rewrite this expression as... Indeed, we see that the action of the source is to change the phase of this amplitude. Therefore, this quantity w, which we also call uh, the effective action, is really what is important if I want to um, quantify what is the response of the field to uh, the action of a source. But we are not done yet because we still need to specify what is d. This is called a propagator. Indeed, uh, we can see this equation as I have a source which induces a perturbation of the field in space-time position x. This perturbation is then propagated from x to y by the propagator. So the way I define the propagator is uh, as the inverse of the operator a. We know that in the discretized case, the inverse of a matrix, A, is given by A times its inverse equal to the identity. 
written in terms of the matrix element of these matrices we have. But the matrix elements of uh, the identity matrix are 1 if i is equal to j and 0 otherwise. So that's just a Kronecker delta. If we now take the continuous limit of this equation, uh, the sum becomes an integral and the Kronecker delta becomes a Dirac delta. The 4 here means that we are in four space-time dimensions. So we have, in fact, four delta functions, the product of four delta functions, uh, one for each position of space and one for time. Using the expression for A, we can then write The integral is killed by the delta function, leaving us with that's the fundamental equation which I need to solve in order to get the expression for the propagator.